Hey guys, it's May May, and we are back with our Big Book of Holiday Crafts, and today we're going to do something that is not a card. I'm so excited about this. I love this little book. This is a holiday recipe book. However, what they call it in here is a holiday recipes album cover, because they tell you how to make the cover, and then you get dimensions for the book and just ideas for how to fill it up. Well, if you remember, I have a cinch that I have never used. And I thought, I'm going to challenge myself to use my cinch with this one. Because I said I would do it, and I never did. So I'm going to make this little recipe book to, with you guys together. I think it is super cute. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get some chipboard and cut these front cover, the front and the back. And the dimensions that they call for is 5 and a half by 5. So I'm going to keep my dimensions the same. Um, some of this we may change up, but we'll see. Let's get started. Before we jump into it too much, I wanted to show you the front of the book. It is the Big Book of Holiday Paper Crafts, and several of you have told me you've gone out and purchased it, and then someone told me that there's only like um, seven or eight left in stock yesterday, so if you want this, you might want to go check, and I have put the link below. All right, let's get started. So that I can use my whole work surface and not have this book laying off to the side, I'm going to take a picture of this, and I'm just going to post it on one of the top corners of the um, video so you'll be able to see this up close while I'm working. And we'll move this out of the way. Okay, so the chipboard that I'm going to use is actually the back of a cardstock mat. It's not extremely thick, so if you want yours to be really um, really stiff, you need to upgrade your chipboard. What I'm going to do is sandwich the chipboard in a couple of layers of cardstock anyway, so I think it's going to be just fine, and that'll help to beef it up. So I'm going to cut these down to five by five and a half. Now the cool thing is, once you see this come together, you'll be able to make this in any size you want. So now I've got my bases. What I want to do now is decide what papers I want. And I'm not trying to match their papers at all this time. I really want to do my own thing with papers. So I'm going to look through my um, Christmas papers and see what I've got. I want to use this candy cane stripe. I love this. So I'm going to use this candy cane stripe for the front and the back cover, and then I'm going to put this on the inside. I think this is so cute together. So for these guys, I'm going to cut them down to the same dimensions as the cover. I'm going to make four of them, two of the peppermint and two of the green chevron, because I want it to go top and back. So outside and inside. So five and a half. by five. So now I have my two insides and my two outsides. I'm going to go ahead and glue them down and I'm going to use some wet craft glue and try to get it. This will help build up strength again and I'm going to rub it on fairly thin but all the way to the edges and all the way through the middles on both sides. I'm not glopping this up. I don't want you to think that. I'm really sliding this on really thin. If you want to, you could take a paintbrush or your finger and smear it around, and that would work just fine as well. I don't like getting my fingers in glue. <laughs> For a crafter, I might, that might be weird, but I do not like getting my fingers in glue. I don't know. It's one of those pet peeves. Okay, so I'm going to flip this over. Do the same thing again. And then I'm going to put the front part on it. I just love that together. Make sure your sandwich is good and snug all the way around. And you might like to sit something on these, like a book, to kind of flatten them out while they dry. But that's just total preference. So there's a front cover and an inside. And now I'm going to do the other one. Okay, so I have two fronts and two inside covers. So you need to pick which one you want to be your front. But there's something else I want to do. If you notice in their picture, they have square edges. I'm going to round my edges. I think that looks really good on a book. So I'm going to take my... Um, crocodile here, my corner chomper I mean, and I'm going to cut these corners into half an inch curves. And I can't, I'm not sure yet if I'm going to do all of them or just the ends. 
So let me start with just doing the edges. Then I'll look at it and see. <laughs> I kind of like it just having these curves because I think that looks like a book to me. So I'm going to leave it like that. Now in their picture, it does look like they do a little ink distressing. I'm going to do that too. So I'm going to take some distress ink in um, Vintage Photo because that's my favorite. And I'm going to take my ink blending tool and I'm going to rub it all around the edges. I think that makes it look vintage Christmas. And I'm doing it pretty heavy, pretty heavy line. I really want you to be able to see it and look very vintage. I'm also going to do the insides. Love that. I love the way that looks. I'm going to keep that close by because I may do some more inking. Okay, so here's my covers. Man, that went quick, didn't it? Super fast. Now let's work on the um, dress. No, let's, let's work our way up. Let's work now on the insert here. They use an oval. Let me see what I've got. So I don't have an oval, but I have this Labels 10 set from Spellbinders, and I love these labels. So I'm going to use this. I'm going to use a larger one and a smaller one. Now we just need to find paper for it. Now since this is kind of a solid, they have a solid red border and then a pattern in the middle, we'll see if I can't find something kind of solid as well. So as I dug, I found these two scraps, and I really like this one for the base, this darker red, and then this one for the insert in the center. So let's get the uh, cuddle bug out and get, get busy. Okay, so for my cutting um, sandwich, I'm going to use an A plate, a B plate, the paper I'm going to cut, the die cut, or the die, and then a C plate for cutting. Just lay that down and run this through. You want to make sure your blade portion is down on your die. You'll know which one it is. It has a little beveled edge. You'll feel it whenever you get them. So now let's take this guy out. So here's my first layer. Now we're going to use A and B again. Our snowflake paper. Our other die. Just like so. And C on top. All right, so let's bring this back. And now we have our covers. We have a border for this little piece to sit on top of. I think that's super cute. And now I'm going to ink those edges. I love this paper inked. So pretty. Okay, so now we can adhere this to this. And I'm just going to do that with ATG. Just kind of center that in there. Very good. Okay, and now they show it already just stuck down here. So I'm going to go ahead and do that too. And I'm going to use ATG for that as well. I think I'm already sensing an issue for myself, so I want to tell you this now. I didn't leave a lot of room for the hole punches with my cinch, so if it goes through this paper, I'm not going to stress over it. If it goes through my borders too, no big deal. But you might want to take your piece and move it over to make sure that you have plenty of room for that too. Because their sentiment goes underneath, I want to work on the sentiment and make it lay underneath as well. So, there says holiday recipes. Let me get some paper to work with that. This strip actually came out of my um, scrap box, and I think I'm going to put it here. Now, theirs actually matches that corner, and we could do that too. I say we do it. I'm going to make this match that corner, so let me get the cuddle bug back out. Now, I've sat the cuddle bug to one side because I want you to be able to see what I'm going to do here. I've got my A and B plate in, and I'm going to use the larger of the dies and the reason is I want this sentiment to go all the way to the edge of that piece. Now I want this sentiment strip to have the same edge as my insert on my cover. So I'm going to lay this in such a way that it'll cut it to mimic that edge. Now to make sure it stays in place I'm going to take a post-it note and just lay it over both of those pieces so I know it doesn't move and then run it through. Now when I bring this out, I'll pull this away, you see how I have, you see how my edge will now mimic what we already did earlier. Okay, so now, and I'm not going to trim this to fit yet as far as length, now when I put this on, see how it'll run right out to that edge? Just like how they did theirs. I love how that looks. That's really cute. Now we got to find something to stamp right here. 
I don't have a stamp that says Christmas recipes, but I do have this one that says have a holly jolly Christmas. I'm going to use that. I think it'll be cute. And I like that little saying. And I like the way the vintage ink looks. So I'm going to do it with this vintage photo. And I'm just going to stamp it right here outside a little bit to the edge. Just like that. Alright, so then now that I got this stamped, I'm just going to take the ink that's left over on my ink blending tool and ink. And you see that I have not cut this away yet because I don't know how far I want the strip to go yet because of that dress. I want to kind of wait on cutting that down for a little bit. So I have this ready to go here. I really like that. All right, next we'll work on the dress. Okay, so our sentiment's done and waiting, and now we're going to work on the dress. Now here's the thing. The book says to trim a strip of pattern paper and fan fold it to create the apron skirt. It's not a dress, it's an apron. I just realized that. Okay, so let's try that. Now, it does not tell you the dimensions of that piece of paper. So what I did was I took a strip from some that I used on a card on the uh, ornament card, and I cut it to three and a half by two. And now we're just going to see how this works. It says to accordion. They kind of just sloppily accordion. So I'm going to start, I'm going to fold this piece back slightly so it doesn't have a raw edge. And then I'm just going to start to fold forward and just see what kind of happens. Just kind of play with it. And it doesn't look like they did a perfectly neat accordion. Like they just kind of did it in different ways. Kind of sloppy. I don't know about this, guys. <laughs> the good thing is, have you ever seen the scallop circle dress? You could probably get the same kind of look. Okay, I don't hate this. Now it's a little symmetrical because I did four little pleats. <laughs> but it's not the worst. It's kind of cute. Let's see how it fits. Oh, I think that's cute on there. Okay, then it says, I think my I think my waist needs to be a little smaller. Let me squeeze it in a little. When I looked at it on there, I thought, hmm, because it's an apron, I'm gonna make the waist a tiny bit smaller. So I just did that by pinching those pleats in a little more. That's better. Now it says for the apron top, trim apron top from pattern paper and adhere to skirt. So it doesn't even tell you how to do it, but I have an idea. I'm gonna take this heart punch and this paper that has this little trim at the top, which I think is super cute. I'm going to take this back off so I can see it. And I'm going to lay this in. Oh, not like that. That's not going to work. Let me trim this paper off. Because I want this to be where the heart portion is, I needed to trim that a little bit. So what I'm going to do is cut this so that that little trim is at the very top in a heart shape. And we're going to turn this into our apron top. Or we're going to attempt to. <laughs> so what I'm going to do is put this little guy here. And I'm going to see where I need to trim it down. Okay. So I'm going to come out here and I'm going to trim inward. Like if we were making the waist. Do you see that? And then I can just take this side and lay it over here to be my pattern. So just line it up. You can trace it with a pencil if you want, or just cut it out by hand. And this way you'll know you'll get the same shape on both sides. Alright, so let's see what that looks like. Looks like a little dress kind of apron. I think that's super cute. Now let's ink it. And something I'm going to do here is I'm going to ink these little ruffly pieces just by rubbing the ink over it and letting it catch to be a little darker in places because I like the way that looks. And then that will attach to the top there. We'll fiddle with that in a minute. Oh, I get it now. <laughs> the ribbon is the tie for the apron. Now it makes sense. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is try to make this fit this little heart really well. The little top and adhere that down. I think I'm going to use some dry adhesive because I think it'll work faster. If I had my hot glue gun, I would use it. I told you I needed glue. I still hadn't been to the store. Just going to run that over it really good. And then holding it in place, stick this down. 
and let that be what holds it together. Now I'm going to find a piece of ribbon to be the tie. So guys, what says Christmas more than rickrack, right? <laughs> I'm going to use rickrack to be the tie for the apron. And I'm going to put it here and at the top, okay? So I'm going to cut a strip away. And I'm going to go ahead and hear it down to the middle. I'm going to use some wet glue for this part. Because I want to make sure that stays in place good. And we'll decide how long we're going to leave it in a few minutes. But I want to go ahead and see if I can't do the little apron topper. I think it looks more like an apron like that than how they have it. Because they just have a little string, which is cute. But I think that's super cute. So this part, I'm going to flip this over. And I'm going to glue this to the back. Now I'm going to put one side down first. Go ahead and get it in place. Then I'm going to take this ribbon and instead of trying to turn it under, I'm going to fold it down like that. I think we'll get a better, a better neckline that way. So stick this piece in. A little more glue. And then just bring this piece down. Sort of have a little bend at the top, but it looks more like an apron that way. And then, because I'm lazy and I want to move on, I'm going to take a little scotch tape and put it back here to hold it in place while we keep working. This is a I don't want to wait tip. You're not going to see that anyway, but it's going to hold that in place and it'll dry over time. Hey, that's cute. I like it. Got a little tape showing. Trim that away. Okay, so to me that looks like an apron. Now one thing they do have that I really like is they have two little buttons on that apron, so I'm going to add those. Do you see these little buttons on here? I think they're so precious. We're going to use those. One and two. So I'm going to put a dot of glue at the top. And at this side. And then place these little guys into that glue. Those are super cute. Okay. Now let's bring this over. And let's see how we want to lay it out. I know I want my sentiment to go here. And it lines up with the very edge. i tell you what I'm going to do. So once I have it lined up with the very edge, I'm going to bring this guy over and see how long. Okay. So right in here. I'm just going to trim that away because I don't need that portion. And I'm going to go ahead and hear this down. So line this up on the edge. And then stick that in place. That is really cute. I'm going to put this up on dimension, I think. On little dimensionals. Because I think it will stick better. I think I'll just use foam tape. I'll put a piece here. Well, let's put a piece back here. That one was too long for there. Cut a shorter piece for right here. I think that will help. Because it's not flat really anywhere. So get all that peeled away. And now we can put this little apron on. I love this apron. I want to make more of these. Yep, I really like it on the foam tape. I like the dimension. Alright, now I'm going to decide where I want my little ties to go. I want it to go kind of down. So there's one. Then I'm going to let this one go kind of up. Like that. And put a little glue up here. And just stick that ribbon in there loosely. That little rick rack. So I want it to lift up a little bit and then put this over here and I'm going to try to leave it loose because I got the binder, to, the binding to put on and I don't want that to be in the way. So I glued it kind of close to the apron to give myself some room. That's everything they have on the front. Oh no, they have a little um, thing on the front on this apron. Let me see what I want to put on there. Do you guys remember this punch? I punched the bottom at a craft and the top out of red. 
I'm going to adhere those two together and put them on there. I think that'll be really cute. Let me ink them real quick. This is going to be dainty work. <laughs> now, I'm going to use some Tombow on this. So, first things first, I'm going to put down the little top, the little um, cupcake top. Use my little pickup stick. Like so. I'm going to put the little guy underneath. Place that here. It looks more like a muffin than a cupcake, but I still think it's cute on that little apron. What do you think? I think it's cute so far. Now we just need to work on our tab pieces, our paper, and then punching it and put it all together. Okay, so it's time to work on our tabbed inserts. Now, because I want this to be easy, this is how I'm going to do it. They don't say this in the book. They tell you a little bit of a harder way, but we're going to do something simple. So what I did was I cut three pieces that don't match, three coordinating pieces, down to five and a half by five, which is the dimensions of our book. So they're going to sit right inside the book. But I need to corner around the same edges as the book so they don't stick out funny. So using my corner chopper and the half inch setting, just going to go ahead and chomp those corners off so now they'll fit correctly. And now we're going to make our own tabs for the top. Instead of trying to cut a piece longer, we're going to make some tabs. And let me show you how we're going to do that. So for the first part of the plan, I'm going to take three pieces of paper that are the same ones I'm using for the dividers, and I'm going to cut them down to one and seven eighths by two. And I need three of those. So there's one. Okay, now we need our scoreboard. Now that I have my scoreboard, I want to take these little pieces I cut and put them in the scoreboard on the two inch side. So one and seven eighths is going portrait, two inches is going landscape. And I want to score it at one inch. So there's one. Make sure you've got the two inch side here and score it at one inch. So we're basically scoring these little pieces in half. That score line is going to come in handy in just a second. Now I'm taking my envelope punch board and I'm going to lay that score line in the center of the punch. Or you can line the edge up with the one inch. Whichever way you want to do it. You can use the score line in the center or one inch over here. You did the score line to help you fold really because you can just measure it at the one inch if you'd rather do it that way. And once you do that you'll fold these in half and you get a tab. So this is an easy way to get a tab for all your projects. If you need a tab, just measure out what you need, find the center, line it up, and this will make a cute tab for the top of your pages. All right, so I'm going to fold these in half, and I'm going to ink them real quick. Okay, so they are all inked up. Now these are the pieces we cut to be our dividers, and I have not inked those edges yet, so I need to do that real quick. Now something else I'm going to do before I put these all together is I don't like how plain these are on the back because these are single sided paper. So I could cut another piece and like glue them together, but I want to use some stamps right here. So check this out. So I have some pretty big stamps that I don't get to use a lot. And the reason is because they're so big. And I thought this would be really cute on the back sides of these. Just to dress them up a little bit. I'm just going to keep using the Distress Ink. And then straighten this paper out. This stamp tis the season there with some little ornaments. Isn't that cute? Then from the same stamp set, there's some snowflakes. So I'm just going to take them and load them on the block together, kind of next to each other. Just ink them up and just put them in different spots. I like that side. Now I'm going to do another side with something different. So there's that one. Then I have this one that says holiday greetings with some trees. And I think that will be pretty on this one. So there we go. They're all kind of just stamped up different ways. I think that's super cute. Now we need to put our tabs on them. And here's what I want to do. I want to have the tabs be with different... I don't want to put the snowflakes with the snowflake. So I'm going to put 
the snowflake with this one, the plaid with this one, and the green, and the, oh, that won't work. So the polka dots with this, and the green with this one. I think that works just fine. And here's what we'll do. I'm going to take my ATG and just run it right down the edge on one side. And then your first one is going to go all the way to the very edge of your divider page. Just line that up, just eyeball it for center. Okay, then run some tape inside of that one. Okay, and close it down. That's cute, so you have a little tab now. Again, run your ATG right along the edge. And then on this one, I'm gonna come out here to the edge and line this one up. Add some adhesive and close it down. And the same thing on the last one, but we're going to line it up a little bit different. Let me show you how. We're going to take the two we've already done and lay them here. Put this one in the center so we can see it. Okay. And then eyeball line this one up in the middle. That feels like the middle. And I'm going to move it down to where I know the adhesive is right. And then we'll close it up. So now when we put these guys together, you'll see we get our little tabs. Aren't they super cute? I love them. Okay, now when we put the book together, it's going to be like this. So they're going to stick out the top. Okay, so now all we have to do now that we have all this together is make the pages for inside. Now to save myself some headache later, I'm gonna cut the pages for inside the same size as the border, I mean as the as the cover. The reason is when I go to line it up to use it in the cinch to do the binding, I don't wanna have to try to center those pieces of paper because I've never used the cinch before, so I'm gonna try to make it easy. So I'm gonna cut myself a stack of paper to go inside that is gonna be five and a half by five. So this is the stack of paper I'm going to use, and I just kind of did it by feel, and um, I don't want it to be too much paper in there. I want a good sturdy album, but not too much. So now it's time to learn how to punch this paper. So here we go, pulling out the cinch. All right, guys, so I've never used this thing before. <laughs> so I took a break, and I went to my computer, and I watched some YouTube videos of some talented people show me how to use this. So I'm going to take their advice and do what they do <laughs> and use it. That's better than having to read instructions, right? In that about how we are. Okay. So my understanding is <laughs> that I'm gonna punch the covers first. That the first thing you do is punch these one at a time. The first thing you do is decide how wide your book is. Now mine is five inches. Okay. So because it's five inches, I need to pull peg number ten. So I'm going to pull peg 10. Am I brave to just do this and not know? It feels right. <laughs> so let's see what happens. Oh, please be right. Please be right. Please be right. Oh, it looks good. That even punched through that ribbon that was hanging off. And that's fine because I can trim that. Wow. Okay. Let's do this one. That wasn't hard. I'm going to wish I'd been using this a lot, aren't I? Gosh, it's, it's like butter. It punches so easy. Look! Oh, and I have been scared of this guy. Okay, so there's the covers. Now let's do the papers. I guess I'll go ahead and do these guys because I know I can stick them all in there together. Just punch them. No problem. And now I'll do the pages for inside. And I may do them in kind of stacks because I don't know how thick I can do. Probably I could do a bunch at a time. Mm. Don't want to get too ambitious. Wow. Okay, so that was pretty easy. Now what I need to do is move this out of the way for just a minute. Because I need to put this all together like I want it. And I don't know how many pages I did, but I'm just going to separate this into kind of three sections. So there's a section... 
and there's a section. And so now I'll put one tab on top of one, one tab on top of the other, and one tab on top of the other, and close them up. So now those all have paper between them. Then I put this guy on, and it's my understanding that I have to put the, the back cover face up, I mean inside up on the top. Then I'm supposed to be able to take this guy and because this is nine holes, I need nine pieces of wire. So I'm going to count that. So it'll be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And I'm going to cut it here. I hope this is right. I should really measure or something, shouldn't I? Okay. Then I'm supposed to be able to take these wide hooks and put it on the side of the cinch. Put it where you guys can see what I'm doing. So it's right here. And then put this in. I think I'm going to do it a little at a time since I know how it's supposed to go. Hey, that's right. I'm excited. This is not as hard as I had anticipated it being. I was very shy of this machine. <laughs> Obviously, I've had it forever and haven't used it. Okay, so now that's all done. So now I can take it over there, bring it to the back of the machine, and I'm supposed to line it up. Okay, I'm supposed to set this dial to three quarters. Push and turn. Oh, cool. So set that to three quarters of an inch. Then place the open portion of the spring or the coil flush into the machine and sit it down and then press. But they say to watch it and make sure you don't go too far. Okay. Oh, that's not far enough. I almost had it, but not quite. Oh, I got it. So they're touching. Then I've got this little extra piece right here that I'm just going to clip off. There's actually one on both ends I'm going to clip off. Okay. Now for the big reveal. Ready? I'm excited. <gasps> Look, guys. Oh, I forgot something. No biggie. We can go back and do it real quick. I didn't round these corners. Were y'all yelling at me? <laughs> Let me do that real fast. There we go. All the corners are rounded. It's so cute. I'm going to zoom you guys in. So what do you think, guys? I think it's super cute. And now what I'll be able to do is just go in and put different recipes here and have them for Christmas. I'm excited about this. I'm going to start looking for recipes for it. Hey, if you guys have a favorite recipe that you think would go great into my album, let me know in the comments below. Let me know where I can find it or, um, you know, if you have it on a Pinterest page or something like that. One thing I'm going to do is come right here and trim that just a little bit because it seems to be hanging a little far. It looks a little weird. And I left this one to trim just a little bit. And I'm going to leave it loose. I think it's cute loose like that. So let's look at their version and my version. What do you think? I like them both, but I'm really happy with mine because I used my cinch for the first time. I'm really happy with my cinch. Now, one thing that I noticed on theirs is that they didn't do the cinch the way I did it. They did it smaller, and I did mine all the way up. But I still like it. Okay, guys, I hope you enjoyed this one, and I will see you again on Friday. Now, no promises. I'm really trying to do this. I have something I've been working on for over a year that is a Christmas project I wanted to offer to you guys, and I'm hoping to get it up this week, and if I can't, it's okay. I'll get it up as soon as I can, but if I can, I hope you guys will really enjoy that. So keep an eye out. I might have an extra video, hopefully on Thursday. We'll, we'll try and see what we can do. If not, I'll see you on Friday. Have a great one, guys. Bye-bye.